Overseas now to Italy, where the most powerful earthquake there in decades strike in an area already reeling from three other recent quakes. Take a look at this, the earth there falling away sharply, those cars nearly tossed over the cliff. The hilltop village behind it almost completely destroyed and people running in panic yet again. ABC's Jennifer Eccleston is in Rome tonight. The powerful quake causing buildings in central Italy to collapse in seconds. The power of the 6.6 .6 magnitude tremor, the strongest in nearly 40 years. The third major rumble in just one week, sending terrified residents running into the streets again. In Norcia, near the epicenter, nuns carried to safety. Tonight, the dust clearing to reveal the historic 14th century basilica in ruins. Reports of at least 20 injured. It's just five days after back-to-back -back quakes hit the same region. Nearby, Amatrice rocked again, two months since deadly tremors killed nearly 300. The view from above showing a town already utterly devastated tonight reduced to ruins. The faces ripped off home after home. There's no reason to think it's now suddenly magically going to stop. They're going to be continuing to have aftershocks. Some of them are going to be bigger. Miraculously, no one was killed in this latest quake. But tonight, aftershocks roll through the area, a population on edge and on the move. All right, so brace yourself for the big one. That is the warning from a leading scientist who says California is overdue for a major earthquake. So just how big are they talking here when we come back? Meanwhile, California's next big earthquake is coming, folks. You've been hearing it for so many years, but according to a leading scientist who says the Southern California section of the San Andreas Fault is now primed for some action. San Andreas is the state's longest fault and one of the most dangerous. Chief correspondent Jonathan Hunt live in Los Angeles for us. So Jonathan, what, what are they seeing in this fault at this point? Well, some pretty stark warnings, Martha. We haven't had a big one along the southern section of the San Andreas Fault as earthquake scientists define a big one since about 1857. But there's obviously been a lot of earthquake activity around the globe recently. You'll remember the terrible pictures uh, we have seen from Ecuador, for instance. So now they're saying San Andreas Fault long overdue. And when you look at a map of the San Andreas Fault, it's about 800 miles in total in length right along California. But it's that southern section near uh, Los Angeles that they're concerned about. You see San Bernardino and Riverside marked there, suburbs of L.A., and they say that that section looks ready to go. The quote, in fact, from Thomas Jordan, director of the Southern California Earthquake Center, was this, quote, the springs on the San Andreas system have been wound very, very tight, and the Southern Andreas Fault in particular looks like it's locked, loaded, and ready to go. Frightening words. And every earthquake expert we've been hearing from in probably the last decade, Martha, has been saying the same thing. The one thing they can't agree on is exactly when it's coming. Martha? Yeah. And boy, would that be helpful. So how bad do they think, looking at yeah. where this is, it could be? And, and has anything or can anything be done to, to mitigate the damage? Well, first of all, on the uh, preparations, they say that we should be prepared for an eight magnitude earthquake. Obviously, that is absolutely huge. Uh, they put out a simulation, in fact, of what the shaking might look like in the LA area. And a 2008 US Geological Survey uh, report said that if we had something like a 7.8 earthquake, for instance, it could cause something like 18 hundred deaths, 50,000 injuries, and something like $200 billion in damage to the Southern California area. So this is a major problem. Uh, but for a lot Earthquake light shaking expected in 59 seconds. You're listening to California's Earthquake Early Warning Notification System. These are going to be for earthquakes of significance um, that are going to uh, result in enough shaking. California already has some 570 earthquake sensors, but when the Napa quake struck two years ago, seismologists were unable to get the warning out to the public. The two sensors closest to the epicenter of the earthquake were not fast enough to contribute to the earthquake early warning system. 
But today, the Office of Emergency Services announced $10 million in new state funding thanks to a bill just signed by Governor Brown. It will nearly double the number of sensors statewide to 1,100, providing fire departments with extra time to react. Well, minutes or even seconds of early notification could help us take some critical immediate actions, like getting the doors of the station open, uh, pulling rigs out. And early warnings can also help mass transit systems like BART in dealing with 64 trains during the peak commute. About 40 of those 64 trains are going to be traveling about 70 miles an hour. If I have 20 seconds of warning, I can reduce that down to 10 miles an hour. But state officials warned today it will take at least two years to roll out the new system, which will take a massive overhaul of technology. Most people assume that they'll get the earthquake early warning on their cell phone, and that's certainly a goal, but the system is not currently capable of delivering fast notifications to millions of people. Obviously, and uh, the city of San Francisco again. As we take a look at that, that, that appears to be what uh, would be the Marina District. The entire upper deck of the cypress structure. That is the section of highway that connects the Bay Bridge to the Nimitz Highway 880. It just seemed to collapse during the shaker. Uh, you can see those ripples in the road. I'm guessing, but what I am afraid of, and what what we the information we seem to be getting seems to confirm this that those ripples in small part are caused by vehicles trapped underneath. Uh, we have no idea how many vehicles were trapped underneath. If you could see how violent that shaking must have been. Because of our power outages and wire services are not coming in with other reports? Well, we're told uh, that uh, this earthquake today was measured at between 6.5 and 7 on the Richter scale. Power failure, therefore the game will be postponed. We ask that you hold on to we have been told that there has been some uh, dramatic rescues in the area of this, what you're looking at right now, the cypress structure. People have risked their lives to crawl up under that those two compact pieces of highway to find survivors, and they have brought people out alive. We were told that this person in here now that they're going for, and we don't know. Thanks for watching. Now, we've been looking into the concerns surrounding that large fault or crack that's in the ground that recently opened up near and behind that shopping center. Our Lauren Hanley is at the scene there at the Logan Town Center in Blair County. So, Lauren, what's the latest? Well, Carolyn, if you take a look at the large crack in the ground behind me, you can see that a series of power lines actually runs along the base of the mountain here. So, depending on the, how the ground shifts, we could have an even bigger problem. We spoke with a Logan Township police officer who was keeping an eye on the area early this afternoon. He actually told us to move away from the power lines in case the ground shifts and knocks them down. He told us these power lines have anywhere from 40,000 to 90,000 volts running through them. If they come down, the whole area will be electrified. Now that means all of the stores that sit back along the mountain here will lose power and will be in a charged area. Anyone standing in that area would be in danger. But we're not sure how quickly the ground is moving here. The officer told us he heard the crack grows further apart by two inches every day. And the surveyor from the Eads group we spoke with says it's moving, but very gradually. He didn't say there was any immediate danger or that part of Brush Mountain would break off and come crashing down. If anything, it would keep slowly sliding apart. Now, we can't seem to get a straight answer on what exactly will happen with this area. We've heard a couple of things. One, they might dig out part of the mountain, but then we've also heard they might try to anchor it, as you've seen in areas along 99. But in the meantime, we'll see what happens with this area, if there are any plans, and we'll bring you the latest. Reporting live in Logan Township, Lauren Hanley, WTAJ News. In March 2011, the world watched in awe and horror as a colossal tsunami ravaged eastern Japan. The result of a 9.0 magnitude earthquake. Entire cities were washed away. Millions stranded without power or water. 
15,000 died. It was an otherworldly event, thousands of miles away. Thank goodness, many of us thought, it couldn't happen here. But it could happen here. In fact, scientists say it's a question of when, not if, a devastating earthquake, followed by a huge tsunami, strikes the continental United States, right here in the Pacific Northwest. This would be like five or six Katrinas all at once, up, up and down from California to, uh, to Canada would be the closest thing I can think of. It may sound like a Hollywood disaster movie, I see it. But it's not. This is the future for the region's 7 million people, says Chris Goldfinger, a paleo seismologist at Oregon State University. In fact, his research shows much of the region is overdue for a major quake. The last one was back in 1700, long before there were large cities right in harm's way. If it happens anytime soon, it would just, just devastate the area. Goldfinger estimates there's a one in three chance the quake will strike sometime in the next 50 years. Would you say that we're prepared for something like this? We're not completely unprepared, but uh, we're pretty darn close. On a scale of one to 10, we're probably a little shy of one at this point. This is ground zero, the 700 mile long area off the Pacific coast called the Cascadia subduction zone, where the North American tectonic plate meets another plate known as the Juan de Fuca. The dark image we're seeing here is literally sliding under the lighter image. That's right, so they're converging but still stuck. And so what happens is the weaker plate, which is North America, buckles, and eventually something's gonna give so the coastline that's been jacked up over 500-ish years or so is going to drop about a meter 